This is Joseph Drust, and welcome back to another episode of Ask ZBrush. So we had a question sent in asking, how can I go about wrapping a tube around a cylinder shape? So to start off, I just have ZBrush loaded up, and I just have a simple cylinder shape here loaded in. This is just created from a primitive over here in the tool palette. Now the question is asking about taking a shape like this and then appending in another object and wrapping that other object around this shape. So I'm going to go through a few processes in which you can do to achieve that effect. So the first one, I'm just going to navigate over here to the tool palette. I'm going to go to the subtool area over here. And then I'm just going to click on this append button here. And I'm just going to append in a cylinder 3D object. So this is going to allow me to append a new subtool, which is now going to be this cylinder shape, into my existing tool. So I have my original cylinder shape and now a new cylinder that has been appended as a separate subtool. Now I've turned on my floor here. You can see this is how my world is currently positioned. So I'm just going to make sure I'm aligned in this view here. I'm going to turn the floor off and I'm also going to disable perspective. I'm going to make sure I have that new cylinder that I appended selected. And now I'm going to navigate up to the top here. I'm going to click the Move option here, which is going to give me the Gizmo 3D. With the Gizmo 3D selected, I'm going to hover on this outer ring here. And I'm going to click and drag. And I'm going to hold down Shift until it's rotated in negative 90. So I'm going to have it rotated so it's now going horizontally around the model here. Next thing I want to do is I want to scale this out in the Y. I'm going to hover over this little rectangle shape here, which should be scale Y. And I'm going to click and drag on that just to scale this out some. So something like that. I'm going to zoom out a little bit, and then I'm going to use the middle square here, which is scale XYZ. I'm just going to scale that down a bit, and then I'm going to move it down in the X until it's at the bottom of my cylinder shape. So now I have this tube created, and it's positioned directly under my initial cylinder. So now that I have this tube created, I now want to take this tube and I want to bend it around my cylinder shape. So the first process I'm going to use is I'm going to use a deformer. So if I have the Gizmo 3D selected, there is this gear icon, and if you hover over this, it will be labeled Customize. And if I click on this gear, it's going to open up this menu here. At the top of this menu, you have a bunch of different primitives that you can use to create different items inside a ZBrush. And then below this, you have a large list of deformers. So the deformer I'm looking for here is this bend arc deformer. So I'm just going to hover over that and then simply click, and this will now activate that deformer. Now, if you rotate around your model when the deformer is active, you're going to see a series of cones. And if you hover over any of these cones, you're going to get a description of what each one of these cones will do. So the cone I'm looking for is the one that should be directly underneath the original cylinder shape here. And if you hover over this cone, it should say angle, and then you'll have an equal sign and say zero. So we just want to hover over that cone. And then we're going to hover over it, and we're going to click and drag upwards. And as you drag this upwards, you're going to notice that that cylinder shape is going to start to bend. And we just want to drag it all the way up until the dialog at the bottom there says negative 180. And if I zoom out a little bit here, you can now see I've taken that cylinder shape and it has now created this bend effect. So it's basically taken that shape and now generated a ring out of it. So now with this ring generated, you can see it's a little bit off of the surface of my cylinder shape here. So I need to adjust another parameter on this bend arc deformer. So I'm going to hover over this cone here. And if you hover over this, it should say radius equals zero. And I just want to click and drag on this. And this will allow me to scale the radius effect here. And I can scale it down until it about bumps into that cylinder shape. So right now, my value here is about negative 0.41. I just want to scale that down a little bit. So now I've taken that tube shape. I've used the bend arc deformer to bend it around that cylinder shape. And I've also adjusted the radius to fit it closer to the original shape. Now, after you have something like this, we now need to go back into our gear customize menu here by just clicking this. And now we're just going to click the accept option here, which is going to lock in this deformation. Now, after we've accepted this, we now just want to make sure this tube is now centered to the world, like my existing cylinder shape. So I'm first going to click this little icon here that will go to Unmasked Mesh Center. And that's going to go right to the direct center of the tube shape. Now, I just need to take this tube and center it to the world axis. So I'm going to click this home icon here, the little house. 
and this will now recenter the gizmo to the center of the world. So now this tube should now be bent around the cylinder shape there and will also be centered to the world. So this is now matching that cylinder shape I originally created. So that was the process of using the deformer, which is the bend arc deformer. So that's the first way you can take a shape, such as a tube, and bend it around a cylinder object. Now if I undo this here, just get back to my original cylinder shape, there's another deformer that is pretty handy at bending objects in your scene. So I'm gonna go back to the customize menu and open this up, and this time I'm going to select the bend curve deformer here. Now when you activate this deformer, you're gonna get another set of cones that are gonna be generated. And you're gonna get this little bounding box around your object. And once again, if you hover over these cones, you're gonna be able to see what the different cones will end up doing. So we first wanna find the axis cone here, and we just wanna click and drag this until we get these little dots going to the extents of our tube shape. So you can see as I change the axis value here, the position of these dots is going to be modified. So we wanna make sure that the dots are at the ends of our tube. The next thing we wanna do is we wanna locate the resolution option here, and we wanna click and drag on this, and this is going to allow us to add more of these dots to our shape. So you can see as we change this resolution value here, we're gonna be able to add more dots. And now we can rotate to the front of our model here, and now if we hover over any of these dots and click and drag, we're gonna be able to start bending that shape. So we can come through and start clicking on these and start deforming our tube shape. And this can be deformed all around different surfaces on your model, and you can manipulate these pretty freely. So you can generate some interesting designs by just taking that tube and then bending it around different objects. This also works great for cloth. So if you wanna wrap some stuff around a character or a different object in your scene, you just go to this deformer's palette and activate this deformer and then go through and start manipulating that mesh. Another handy option that this deformer has is it also can be used with symmetry. So if I hover over the cone here, this should say symmetrical at the bottom, and I can activate this, and this will now allow me to work with this bend option here in this symmetrical fashion. So I can create different kind of hook shapes out of that object as it's wrapping around that other mesh in your scene. So really handy deformer there. Now, after you're happy with the deformer, you just need to go back to this customize gear icon here, open this up, and now we just need to accept the changes that we did with that bend curve, and this will now return our mesh back to normal. So that is a second option that you can use to bend a tube around a cylinder shape, and you can access that by making sure you have the Gizmo 3D visible, then going to the gear customize menu here and choosing the bend curve deformer. Now one final way you can take an object and bend it around a cylinder is to use an insert mesh curve brush. So I'm just gonna come back to the subtool palette over here. I'm gonna select my original cylinder shape. And I'm gonna hide the eyeball icon here for the other object. So I now just have that cylinder shape selected. The next thing I wanna do is I wanna to navigate to the brush menu over here and I'm just gonna click this and I want to locate an IMM curve brush. So I'm gonna select this curve strap snap brush right here and this is now going to give me this brush. Now this brush will allow you to draw a curve on your mesh, and wherever you draw this curve, you're going to get a strap generated. So if I come across my cylinder here and click and drag, you can see as I drag that curve out, I'm going to get this strap generated across the surface of my model. Now you could take this and try to manipulate this to bend around the cylinder manually. However, there is a functionality you can do with any IMM curve brushes, that will allow you to draw a curve out on your model. So if I come across my mesh here and click and drag, and as you're drawing it out, if you hold down shift, it's going to take that curve and wrap it around the mesh. Now once you release, you're gonna see that it's going to take that IMM brush and it's going to wrap it all the way around my object. So that process again, let me just undo this here, is first make sure you have an object selected without subdivisions. Come over to the brush palette and select a curve brush. So like this curve strap snap brush here. Come across your model, click and drag, and as you're dragging, hold down shift, and this will perform a loop around the object you currently have selected. And then when you release, that curve is going to be generated around that mesh. Now after you have generated this curve, you can modify things like the intensity, and then click on the curve again to update it, and this will allow you to get a larger shape. You can also adjust your draw size here. You can see now you've taken that object and generated it around that cylinder. 
Now, once you're happy with the curve shape that has been generated, you just need to make sure you delete the curve. So we can go to the stroke palette up at the top here. We can go to the curve functions option here, and now we can click delete. And now we have that tube now being wrapped around that cylinder. Now, after we have this wrapped around the cylinder, you probably want to separate this off to its own subtool as well. So we can go back to the subtool palette over here. We can scroll down to the split options here. And in here, we can use the split unmasked points. Since anytime you generate an IMM curve brush on a model, that part is going to be unmasked and everything else is going to be masked. So we can now use the split unmasked points. And this will now split the unmasked areas out into a new subtool. And now if we go back to our subtool palette over here and select that, we can activate solo to see this. You can see I now have that cylinder shape by itself. So those are three methods in which you can take a cylinder object and wrap different objects around the surface of that model. If you have any other questions related to ZBrush pipelines or processes, please use the hashtag AskZBrush on Twitter. Happy ZBrushing.